from this new hire, specimen paper number one, the intersection of a line with a curve. Find the coordinates of the point of intersection of this curve with this line for five marks. Well, you could just go straight ahead with the algebra, but you can visualize that. You can see what's happening. I know what happens with that positive cubic curve when you've got terms in the middle. It ends up looking like this. I'll not bother putting the axis in. So if a line's going to come along and intersect it, it's got to hit it at least once because this line goes up and down forever. You can't get past it without hitting it. It's just how many times will it hit it? Because it could just hit it the once. It could come in and skim it. So it's actually hitting it twice. Notice that counts as a double hit. That would be identified by a double root to the equation. Or it could hit it three times. What's going to happen here? Well, it all just depends on what the algebra will show us. So it's an intersection, which means I'll carry out a substitution. I'll substitute 1 in 2. That means looking at number 2, where I see a y, I'll use the substitution number 1's telling me to do, which is to say, let y be this. Or you can just think, at a point of intersection, the coordinates must be the same. The y coordinates must be the same. So what would happen to the x coordinates for that to be the case? Well, then I would have x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 4, which is the y, equals 4x plus 4. And that's your first mark. Now, there are different types of terms in x. There's different varieties of x. There's x's and there's x squared. When there's only one variety of x, you can solve it linearly, you could call it, because there's only the one mention of it. In which case, you could just keep x on one side and fire across the various things you don't want. But when there's different types of x as mentioned, then you have to take it all to one side, equate it to zero, and factorise it. It's only factors equal to zero that are useful. If you factorised it equal to four, for instance, you could go on forever finding things that could multiply to make four. What multiplies to give zero? A zero times anything does it. So bring it all over. So there's nothing to knock that out. There's nothing to knock that out. That 4x will come across as a minus 4. That'll turn that into a minus 3. And quite nicely, that 4 knocks out that 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. And that's worth the mark. Now factorise it. Nicely, there's a common factor. Always look for common factors, first of all. So taking out an x, that will drop to x squared. That will drop to 2x, and that will drop to 3. Now factorise this quadratic. And it's paper one, so it should factorise. Well, the first times the first makes the first, and it can only be x times x. The last times the last makes the last, so that's a 1 and a 3. And that's right, because these numbers multiply to give 3, and I've got a difference of 2. The sign of the middle term always goes to the larger product, out of the outer and the inner. So that's the minus, that says they're opposites, so that's it done, that's it factorised. That's your third mark. Now just state the values that satisfy that. If these things multiply to give 0, then any one of them could have been the culprit. Which one of you is 0? Well, you could be 0. Or that bracket could be 0, in which case x would be negative 1. Or that bracket could be 0, in which case x would be 3. That's the next mark. Now just find the y-coordinates that correspond to them by putting them into either equation. Obviously use the simple one. So we'll say, by putting them into number 2, we've got this. x equals 0 means y equals, and it's 4 times it, plus 4. 4 times 0 plus 4, which is 4. So that's the point 0, 4. Notice that's 4 marks, so that you'll have to get all 3 of these correct to get the 5th mark. Just like you need to get all the 3 of those correct. x equals negative 1. I've actually got them in the numerical order of the intersections, but that's the way they came out of this factorization. So that means y would be 4 times it. Add 4. Negative 4 and 4 is 0. So this points the point negative 1, 0. And lastly, x equals 3. What's its y coordinate? 4 times it. Add 4. 4 threes are 12 and 4 is 16. So the last one is 3, 16. Now you get the final mark.